Living Local Carolina with Katie Turner. Local trends, shopping, dining, and more. This is Living Local Carolina. This story is sponsored by Habitat for Humanity. Today I'm taking you guys somewhere where I oftentimes go on my lunch break. I'm at the Habitat for Humanity Restore in Sockety. I'm joined by Joey. Joey, thanks for showing me around today. Yeah, glad to have you here. Oh my goodness. Okay, you guys are going to actually be having a new store opening up very soon. Give me all the details. Yeah, so we are super excited. We have a second location coming um, in the Longs area, right off Highway 9. Uh, we are hoping to be open for business uh, sometime in May. Okay, let's dive in a little bit into what the ReStore is for people that have never shopped here. If you haven't, you need to come by, but what are you guys all about? Yeah, so our main goal here is providing safe and affordable housing in our community. Uh, so the ReStore here, we take donations of couches, love seats, um, any kind of furniture, appliances, building supplies, and we have that available to the public for a cheaper price. Mm -hmm. um, so then we take that money and we put that right into our building our houses. That's very cool. So you can actually see the direct impact right back into the community. How does that exactly work? Yeah, so it's, it's really cool. Uh, so we have a home buyer pro program, which right now actually uh, we are taking applications uh, through March 29th at noon. Um, okay. So we have two application seasons, one in the spring, one in the fall. Um, people can apply to get in our home buyer program. They come in, do some work with us. We work uh, side by side, um, and hopefully they get their house. Um, but what we do, we take that money here, and that funds those houses. I love it. And you guys have lots to offer here at the ReStore. There's really anything that you could possibly need for your home, but it's different every day. You never know what you're gonna get. It is, our inventory changes almost hourly. Yeah. Uh, so we have two trucks that goes out and does free pickups in the community. Uh, we also uh, take drop-off donations. So yeah. then when they bring them back here, customers are all excited. Um, and it, you know, it, it really does almost change hourly. So for this new location, you guys are taking donations. How can people help out? Correct, so we will start, we are taking donations now uh, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. up Love at the new it. location. Uh, that is at 2191 um, Highway 9 East. Uh, you can't miss us. We don't have a sign on the building yet, but it will be there in a couple weeks. Love there it. is a sign out front though. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you can certainly drop off donations there and we'll be glad to, to help you out and still get your tax deductible receipt. And is there anything that you can't donate? So we don't take any clothes or like linens. Okay. Um, anything that's stained or ripped or broken, we can't take, uh, but we take a little bit of everything. Yeah, for sure. I have walked through here so many times and a lot of my home is now thanks to the ReStore. Okay, why did you guys want to open a location in Longs? Well, our county is so so large. Mm -hmm. uh, Warren County is a very large county, and we're just trying to service the other part of the county. Um, the more stores that we have, the more revenue we get to generate, which goes back into our homes and more families that we can serve. And how does it feel whenever you're actually able to see that come to fruition? It's super cool. Uh, there's not a, really a feeling to that, that you can describe uh, when you see the family start from day one when maybe they're just starting with the program and then that day that we have their uh, home dedication just to see the excitement in their face. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna take you guys along shopping with me, but first give me a little bit more information about this new store and what people need to know before it opens. Yeah, so it's gonna be a brand new building, 25,000 square feet. It's uh, gonna be super cool, very accessible, uh, but we will start taking, we're already taking donations now. Hoping to open mid-May, as soon as we get the store full, we'll open it up to the public and we'll start having some fun. I love it, thank you so much. How can people learn more information? Yeah, if you go to our website, habitatori.org, you'll see all of our information from our uh, restores to our home buyer program, all the different events we have going on, um, and also stay tuned to that website because you'll want to know a grand opening date. Yes. So Miguel's behind the camera. He's never been to the warehouse here, so I'm gonna take you back here and show you my favorite part. It's a rooster's chair. I actually really, I really love this. This is very cute. This story is sponsored by Habitat for Humanity.
We'll be back right after this break with more Living Local Carolina. This story is sponsored by Alcon. Okay, well, I'm actually really happy that we're doing this interview today because I'm one of the people that experiences really bad eye allergies, especially right now here in the South. I know a lot of people watching right now are experiencing this big pollen surge. You might be having some itchy eyes. That's why I'm talking with Dr. Sokol today. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you for having me. Okay, let's get right into it. Why are so many Americans experiencing eye allergies and longer suffering than usual? You hit it on the head. It is getting to be a longer season. Climate change has very much affected our pollen season. Most of my patients get reprieve from itchy allergy eyes during the winter when nothing is blooming. But now that the snow is melting, where I have snow is melting earlier and things are blooming sooner. Allergy season is actually reported as being 40 days longer and pollen counts are 250% higher than what they've been in the past. Goodness, and for somebody that's watching right now that might not know if they have eye allergies or not, run me through all the symptoms that you can experience. Allergy eyes are the biggest complaint that I've been having come into my office lately. A patient will have red, watery, itchy eyes. The allergies in the eyes can be very debilitating. It makes it hard to work on computers. The patient doesn't want to go outside. It's just really hard when others think they might have pink eye or that something's wrong or they're emotional. It can be very uncomfortable to have eye allergies. I gotta say, it does also affect me going on camera and having interviews like this one too. Yeah, exactly. I've had a lot of patients who do media and have troubles being in front of camera or even being in front of patients or their coworkers, being able to work and think that they have healthy eyes. Yeah, okay, so how can I avoid triggers and things that will make it worse? Avoiding the allergen is the best first thing to do, but when it comes to your eye allergies, if your eyes are really itchy, you can get an eye drop extra strength pad a day that will help relieve the symptoms of the itchy eyes as well. And I can attest that it actually works extremely well and it has saved me this allergy season. This story is sponsored by Alcon. Well, welcome back to Living Local Carolina. We got a hot topic today, hot and cold, how to keep dogs nice and cool yes. or warm and toasty. That's right. Joyelle, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you, Katie. Thank you for stopping by today. Yes. Give me some tips. Sure. So right now, as you know, we are in a heat wave. So it's very, very hot for our dogs. Mm -hmm. So primarily you need to pay attention to how hot the ground is. When the temperature is around 80 degrees, your asphalt is about 115. Not fun. Not fun at all. So what that actually can do is to burn blisters on the bottoms of your dog's feet. So it's very, very important top of the line, you need to make sure it's not too hot. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I see people walking their dogs in the heat of the day all the time. And I continue to say, it is too hot outside, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so it's really, really important because those mm -hmm. blisters, it, it just creates very much blisters on the bottoms of their feet and it can really damage their feet. So really be mindful of that. Walk in the earlier morning times or in the later evening times, gotcha. okay? Also provide enough water. So if you have outside dogs, which I don't recommend having dogs in the heat of the day outside but if it's not possible make sure you provide them enough shade and you bring them in uh, when mm -hmm. you're able provide enough water for them now going to cold so it's really important again to take care of your dog's feet lots of times people throw out the ice melt or the salt to help uh -huh. prevent any slipping and sliding that also can um, damage your paw's feet as well because it gets into their paws and then they'll Ooh. lick it and it contains all those chemicals that are dangerous for dogs. Ooh. So it's really important that you wipe their feet off, clean them off, again, providing enough water and enough food for them. If it's super cold outside, bring them inside or in a warm area. If they happen to be outside, provide a home for them that's a little bit raised up off the ground, put some shavings or something like that in there so they're not laying directly on the ground. It's very, very important. Gotcha. Yes. Shedding. And do you have any tips? Because I've heard that it's not good to shave dogs. Sure. Because it messes up their coats. Is that true? Oh, 
Oh, so I would definitely say talk to your groomer about that, mm -hmm. but there are tools that you can use. There's like a de-shedder. It's really important because you need to at least brush your dog to get all of the excess hair off mm -hmm. of them, especially during the winter months. They're going to blow their coat anyway. We'll be back right after this break with more Living Local Carolina. Well, welcome back to Living Local Carolina, everybody. Today, I am joined by Matt, who is a producer amongst a ton of other titles. So how are you doing? I am great. I'm great. It's good to be here. How did, how did you figure out that this was what you wanted to do? Uh, you know, Music was always what I wanted to do, even when I didn't know that I loved music. I actually grew up as um, from when I before, when I was in kindergarten. I wanted to be an artist, uh, draw. I love illustrations. Um, for all my anime hits out there, um, I love illustrations. So um, from there until actually high school, my junior year in high school, um, I actually had an art class. Uh, and the art class didn't ha I, that like my last semester of art that I took in high school was a class that they made up for me because I, they didn't have any more classes. I just took the highest art class I could take. And so the next level was college, but I wasn't old enough to be in college yet to take college courses. And so they um, they were like, after that last class, it was like, look, you know, I'm with my guidance counselor and she's like, you don't have any more. You know, we got to take something else for an elective. And so the, the question was literally the option was um, choir or basket weaving. And so, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so I was like, ah, I'll take choir. Oh, uh, and so um, from there, I just found out and realized that, man, I'd always been singing. I always loved music. That was always, I would go home. If I wasn't drawing, I was listening to music, listening to the radio, you know. Um, and so that really, really became an eye opener for me. And then from there, it just, it just evolved and evolved and evolved into where I became a producer. Um, I had a singing group and it was a, a acapella group, you know, and, and we were singing around and we couldn't find um, studios that would actually be able to record us because uh, it was about four or five of us singing our, our, um, acapella harmony and they just didn't know how to the engineers just didn't know how to record us um, and so we started like we just uh, me and the group and the, the management team around us um, just started like, somebody had an, uh, uh, a, a, a mixing console somebody had somebody else had a microphone and somebody else had this somebody else that and we're like let's put it all together until we could find the studio uh, I was like I remember a conversation we had we were having with uh, with uh, I was having with the management company I'm the mouth of the, of the group and so I'm like you know I'm tired of like paying for now mind you I wasn't paying for anything but we're tired of <laughs> I was doing nothing but just singing and writing and so I'm like you know I'm tired of, of paying for um, paying for studios and paying for recordings and you know nobody knows nobody knows what they're doing like we can make, we can do bad recordings on our own <laughs> you know what I mean for free like yeah. that's easy that's it and, and literally when I said it everybody was like quiet for what seemed like an hour but it's probably like five seconds and they're like you know what well let's just put some stuff together until we can find one that you know that'll work that'll work for you Matt and I was like yeah let's do that and so from there I just kind of fell into, you know, telling people what's like, I want to hear this. I want to hear that. And then finally, the guy who uh, who actually taught me how to engineer, he was like, you know what? I'm tired of you telling me what to do. You do it. And, and literally, that was my training. And so I just fell into engineering just like that. There you go. I love stories like that. Though. Obviously, you were a very creative person. You had, you know, so many different hands and pots, but that's so cool. I've traveled over hills, swam the widest seas, to find someone like you, to love me, to love me, there's nothing. 
nothing I can do. You're always on my mind. If there's only three words I can tell you, I tell you a thousand times, a thousand times that I dreamed of you. Don't forget to like our page on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. How to use the QR code. Just open the camera app on your smartphone, iPad, or tablet. Point your device at the QR code so the QR code appears on your screen. Your device will recognize the QR code and show you a notification. Click that notification and you'll come to our website. Living Local Carolina, weekday mornings at 9.30 on WBTW News 13.